This video is brought to you in part by True Tech Tools, quality tools, essential support. All right, so we're back today to replace an evaporator on the train that fell off the tracks. We've got an evaporator that's leaking. I tried to repair it, wasn't able to do it. There was multiple different spots it was leaking in, so we're gonna change it. So let's go ahead and get started. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and get started recovering circuit one here, recovered. Circuit two is empty. Got our poundage road inside there because the stickers have completely faded away. And then we've got our top uh, already loosened up. We're gonna pop this top up, rotate it, so we can get to the evaporator coil right in here. One of the first things I'm gonna to need to do here is get this tank prepped for the recovery. This circuit here has five and a half pounds in it, so we're gonna to try to reuse that. And then we're gonna get all new for the one that uh, is void right now. So we're gonna go ahead and get this thing pulled down, which we've got it going down there. That way it's ready to go. Then we'll get our recovery machine hooked up and we'll start recovering. So we've got the top off of it. We're able to get in the coil. I had one leak right here that I was able to find, but that ended up being on the other circuit, not the one that I actually needed it on. At that point, I decided it was no longer worth trying to fix it uh, after destroying that much of it, which if you look at it, I didn't even go all the way in there, but I was able to patch that one particular area. So we just lifted this up, rotated it. We do need to get some spray glue on this insulation here that's falling down. So a little spray bomb from New Calgon. Prep. I got some of these screws out of there. This is all convenient. So let me get this lifted up. Clears that up there. Getting us ready so that we can get in here. We're gonna re reuse the TXVs. Myself personally, I would like to have seen them all replaced, but got the economizer just about completely unhooked. And we do have a new sensor for that also that we're going to be replacing the uh, mixed air temperature sensor. Here is no good. Just gently remove that. Okay, got the machine blood out. Let's go ahead and get her hooked up to the tank. Tank's already about 590-ish area. I'm happy with that. We're not going for great grand and glorious here. Should have grabbed my other gauges there. The 557s, they actually read directly to the scale, but I can do it with my phone. So, got that ready to go. Let's go ahead and start recovering. So, we're pulling off liquid. See that doing quite a bit there too. It's kind of cool today, so it shouldn't need a ice bath, hopefully. And it's only five pounds into a 50 pound cylinder. So our coils right here, shipped with mighty care. As you can see, the box is in wonderful shape. You can see how they packed it. way oversized box and doesn't appear that there's anything there that it actually hit so definitely not impressed but it's not as horrible as what it could be that looks like it's the right one so let's see if we can straighten that up a little bit there we go So we've got one that has different heads here. Uh, Robin Air. I think I got this in my video description. Down in the bottom, all my tools I use is down there in the bottom of the... Uh, if you click on that, it'll take you to Amazon links. If it's something I can get on True Tech Tools, you can get it at True Tech Tools. I'll have links for that. Use promo code SURVIVAL on True Tech Tools. You get 8% off and uh, help support the channel. Do what you like, but that's where the stuff's at. Like I said, we didn't get the full five and a half pounds, which, like I said, it's also leaking. So, 
Uh, would have liked to have caught it before I went into a negative, but we'll bleed off the top of it once we uh, get done. It's settled for a little bit. I'm going to take this cross member here for the filters and pull that out and use the old one because the way they packaged this thing, it got smashed in there. I mean, you'd think that these were only a couple hundred bucks, but in reality, I don't know the exact price, but it was probably a couple thousand. Easy. Very easily. So let's go ahead and get straightened some more fins out. There we go. I just got done rechecking the history. I had recharged this circuit that uh, was leaking originally. So I just went ahead and finished recovering the last bit of that refrigerant. Haven't measured it yet, but we're gonna go ahead and get this thing removed here now. Gotta be careful when you're done doing this. This could have a little bit of flashback with the Cindy oil and that suction line. I like to remove the torch before I pull it apart. Less chance of flaring up on you. Hopefully we got that much room on this other one. I could always cut it right here too. insulation there it's kind of stopping it those all disconnected made sure that when it pulls out like that it usually stays thin enough there that it'll slide right into the next one no problem and really you don't see a whole lot of carbon build up in there so we're good unbrazen I usually don't get much carbon in there see the same thing there but we're gonna go ahead and work on trying to get this thing loosened up that way we can yank it out of there you know I don't really usually have a bunch of good things to say about the train but they actually did have their screws out here where I needed them at, and I was able to get it loose. So look at those cookies. Ain't nothing but milk now. It looks like we can yank straight up on this thing. Let's go ahead and see if we can get it out of there. May just do this without a helper. There we go. Look at that. Cookies and milk. Yes, sir. Be careful these wires down here. Definitely. Got some stuff going on with that. I took this apart here, probably shouldn't have. Now well, that's something to do with. Just drag it on the rest of the way out.
it's able to part it over upside down there's a metal rail down there I'm able to coast across except when I put a screw in the bottom Alright, so if you look at this here, this is lower than the back one. But when you look at the original one, the back one is higher. And the back one is circuit one. We can follow this line right here, and I purged nitrogen through it. This is one. Then I covered the hole, made sure it came out of this one. So I know this is circuit one, that's circuit one. That's circuit two. That's the only one left. It's got to be circuit two. Uh, what I ended up doing is switch it then to circuit two, pushing through the suction, which we'll use while we're brazing. And I was able to verify that it's coming out on that one there. So now that we've got that already set up, we'll know for sure. This one here, we're going to have to cut it, lower it, swedge it, and then put it back together. I don't know what the heck they were thinking. Who knows? I did count the coil loops and stuff, so it is pretty much the same coil. So hopefully, you know... There ain't no weirdo mistakes here, but it's kind of hard to see how they could have made a mistake here. I, I don't know if they were trying to get better distribution or what they're doing, but I don't know. So we do have the nitrogen going through. I was able to shove that in all the way into the pocket. Crank her up a little bit. And heat up that piece going in first. That way it travels inside of the fitting. And then we'll pull the Dynaflow into the pocket. Spin this a little bit here. It's ready to go. I need a little more heat. I have a bigger pin that I could use, but unfortunately it doesn't fit my torch right, so I have flashback. Definitely gotta make sure this piece is back in there. Otherwise it will fall on you. Where the hell did my drill go? Oh, for criminy sakes! Come on! Hey, fix your little wagon that way, buddy. There you go. I'm tired of dealing with that crap.
what I did is went ahead and bent that pipe out a little bit so we can get lower and get in there and get this cut so that I get the height, the correct height that the factory should have calculated out. And then we'll swedge that and burn it in, and then we'll shove it back together. It'll be just like, like it should have been. Okay, got that marked. Make it a little easier to cut it, and then we'll form it back in. There we go. There we go. Looks a little nicer, don't it? Now, since this is upside down, I'm just gonna run my pliers in there to kind of slightly bend it back out slash deburr it. Cause I really don't want chunks to fall down in there. And that tends to work pretty good. Needle nose, whatever. Just get that thing screwed in there and go at it. Shouldn't have to uh, rotate it multiple times with this size. There we go. That's a nice thick wall piece of copper there. It didn't didn't screw up and split. Swedge kit there definitely comes in handy. I got a quarter inch, which you can buy that, and it goes way up big. You guys have seen that a million times, but most of the work this is all you need. There we go. That should fit up just perfect when it's all said and done. Give the TXV back a little bit. Get that foam out of there. Should be able to burn it right in. Let's make sure we switch our nitrogen over to the other side too. So let's go ahead and get this one here first and then we'll put it together. I like mine just a little oxidizing. It's a little softer, less likely to punch through. It's not how they tell you to do it. They want you to go with the neutral flame usually. That's not how I do it. So we inspected the joint, everything looks good on that. Go ahead and put that partially back together. There we go.
cast this up a little bit since we kind of got it a little messed up. There we go. There we go. There we go. All right. Well, kind of got to be careful of my cord here. Whoopsie daisy. These videos kill batteries. And uh, so we got that one burned in. Same there and there. We'll let this vent continue to cool down. Then we'll wipe off the carbon. This crap would be inside the pipe if you weren't using nitrogen. And then it's going to get caught in the TXV. Got it a little cleaned up now. I always like to pull deep into the pocket all the way around. You should be able to see that, that braze come all the way on the inside, all the way down to the bottom of the pocket. Obviously, if you just do it on the outside, it's going to crack, but some people like to ring it, which is kind of what I did here. A um, little bumpy on that one there. I should have heated it up a little more, but you try to go perfect on it, and then you're melting out your plastics that are all here in the way, and I don't want to do that. And then you've got foam over here, so it's perfectly strong but sometimes it just comes down to the way you want it to look um, brazing skills is definitely something that it uh, they don't teach you in school so it's something you're gonna have to learn they'll show you the basics how to set up your torch but like i said the way they showed me to set it up with a neutral flame i've yet to see that work right um, i like a little bit oxidizing because it's softer flame uh, because i had so many problems with brazing in the beginning years uh, the first year what have you um, that's why i bring it up so like any of these videos, everything I do here is uh, because of things I had problems with, and I just share what I've done to overcome those problems. Now we're ready to start with the filter dryers. Train loves to do goofy stuff. So we've got a 3 8 up here, and then you've got a 5 16 or something stupid. Quarter, I don't know. It's, it's a weird size. So as you can see right there, they end up uh, going to a 163. We ordered the OEM dryers. So now I've got to see if I can get one of these to fit back in there. They extended that three eighths up there. So what I might do is just drop the dryer down closer to it. But I don't know why they went to something goofy like that. It. Normally you're not supposed to sweat these out, but guess what? I'm probably gonna have to sweat it out. I don't have anything extra to, to mess with here as far as extra room. Let's see if we can get that to pull apart. Theoretically, there shouldn't be any um, moisture in it anyway. Should be able to run her this way. We've got our depressor tools because we have those Cormax tools on there. So that'll allow us to bleed out through the suction side, keep her all clean. Oh yeah, that's a good sign. Yeah. Nice and tight against everything. There we go. And the thing I look at it as is if you're purging nitrogen through there, you're not, if I'm able to hold on to this thing like I am right now, I didn't heat that desiccant up enough to release any moisture. It, um, that desiccant's inside there, suspended in between there. It's not that hot. So let's make sure we get our dryer back in the right direction. There we go. Give that a second and then we'll get that back into place here. This thing does not like to be in the sun at all. She shuts down, so I had to take the case off, which really sucks. Another reason why I gotta get away from the phone. So we're gonna go ahead and get that one out of there. I'm gonna let this continue to cool down and uh, get that one yanked out of there. It's the same thing as what I did there. But you can see we got her changed. A little bit of a mark here. Oh, good, it wipes off, so it don't look like, uh... there we go. Looks a lot better now. So we got her in there. That one worked out great. Now, if they would've only done that with the other one, it would've been perfect. Love to beat the guy's head in with a rock that put this freaking junk ass die in there. 
just buy a good leak detector and you don't have to use this crap. This stuff is never instantaneous. You have to come back later. You have to have usually fairly dark. Dye is such an idiotic thing. I've only had one, and that was before I had some of the detectors I got now that I had to actually do that on. And it's just ridiculous. You can get a good detector, you don't need that. The Stratus picked all these leaks up like it was nothing. And uh, the H10 would have been fine back in the day. So we got the one cut loose. This here, I'm gonna see about maybe swedging that and doing it the original quarter inch, whatever it is, five sixteenths or what, I don't know. It's a weird size we don't use. Okay, so we're gonna go old school because that is five sixteenths. I checked the box. And the only thing we got for that, I believe, is one of my ones here. So, yeah. That's uh, my first one, and I had this one back in probably about 96 area, probably 95. I, I don't remember exactly, but yeah, this thing uh, still to this day working good. Nothing wrong with it, just isn't as quick as some of the other ones. But yeah, we'll get our right size on there, and we'll get her done up. So we kind of yeah, deburred that by using the uh, needle nose pliers again. I didn't want the crap falling down in there. And we'll get this thing. Mount it up, go at it. All right, so I went ahead and just bent it so that it would be easier to braise. So horizontal is gonna be a lot easier. That oil in there tells me that it was trapping oil probably because of the increase in the uh, riser. You're going from the 5 16 to 3 8 It's not a huge amount, but generally it's not what you do when you're trying to get proper oil return. Uh, in the liquid form, it should just blast it on through, but still, I don't know. It's just, for whatever reason, there's oil in there in that line. When I blew through it to purge it, it blew green gook all over the place. So what I did is I just bent it up slightly. It's not going to be permanent. I'm going to put the weight of that on uh, the uh, other line there, because when this gets hot, it's going to soften and it's going to want to sag. So that's the reason why I'm doing it like I'm doing it. That oil wants to catch on fire, which is awesome. It'll burn off there in a second. There, it pulled right into that pocket. Perfect. Give that a second to cool, and then we'll move her down to the bottom. All right, so on this here, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna, since that's all one solid piece, I'm gonna take her up to three eighths. That way I can stick the three eighths in there and then just extend it up. And it uh, should be able to do that without splitting it as long as we rotate it a couple times. There we go, no, no, uh, no splitting. That'll allow us to run the 3 8 uh, on down there. The way they did that 3 8 they, I don't know, it was cornball. So, like I said, a lot of times I get away with just rounding the burrs back out. I mean, you're all you're doing is stretching the copper anyway. Get in there, and we'll, that way we can make it flow down. One thing crappy about these hill mortar type benders like this, you can split it real easily right there if you don't rotate it. So that's the only downside. Spin wedge didn't do that. This one kind of does. So you can see it where it's right there. So didn't uh, didn't rotate it enough, so cut her off again. Just that, just a hassle. You, know, you wouldn't think you'd be splitting three eighths, but you know, unless you want to warm it up a little bit. If you warm it up a little bit, you can even do quarter, no problem. Um, any of it, you just warm it up a little bit. It does great. We'll show you here in a sec. Just put a little heat there on the side of it and then we'll stretch it. Don't even have to get it cherry red or nothing like that. Just let her, you can see the color change a little bit. There you go. Now let's go in there and hit it. Shouldn't have a problem at all. One, one go around, no, no backing up or nothing. Boom, perfect. No, no bends or no splits, no nothing. So now we can match that up. we fit right into and fit down into the one that we just made. Look at that. 
Look at them chocolate chip cookies. Yeah. Yeah, not, not real friendly here. You're gonna burn up stuff if you ain't careful. Yeah, I'm uh, barely holding it steady and getting things in there. There we go. They were not thinking a damn bit when they did this. There we go. There we go. Got it all the way around. It looks like we pulled all the way down into it. Covered up that little piece where it burned it a little bit. And looks like we got at least a quarter of an inch or at least a three sixteenths of an inch into the pocket on all edge corners, if not better. And we already did that check there, so we're good to go. We'll pull vacuum. Well, we're going to pull vacuum and I'm going to go run another call at another location. All right, so I went ahead and backed that out. We're going to go ahead and do a pressure test on it real quick, spray all our fittings. And we'll do that to each one of these circuits. Not seeing anything on any of those. There's that. There's that. Now when I get covered up, I ain't worried about this too. There looked really good. All right, all right. So I had to run another call and uh, went ahead and put both hoses on both systems. I've got the valve core depressor on there. Um, got my high sides closed. I'm gonna put my micron gauge on there, see where I'm at. But what I'll do is I'll end up uh, leave my hoses right up to it and then start pumping the refrigerant in. That way I didn't have all the extra fittings and stuff to leak. Um, you can uh, get away with that. So anyhow, that's where we're at. So we're ready to get started here. Let's zero out my gauges here, which they are totally out of whack. 11 inches and seven inches. Uh, as you can see, there's green dye in there. You can see it in my gauges I'm not going to run that crap through my nice 557s uh, kind of weird liquids blue uh, I've always thought of that as being the uh, non liquid side so what we're gonna do is we'll go ahead and bleed up to the very end of the fitting and then we'll reattach it right onto the liquid there and that way we've got all the air out and then when I get it up to here Literally, we'll bleed it. I ain't gonna let the Schrader decompressor hit it. All right, so we're bled up to there, and I got any air out of there. Let's go ahead and get this thing zeroed out, and then we'll start dumping it in. We've got everything hooked up. We've got the top on. I had a whirly bird around me, so we got some things done. Made sure that we're hooking on to the actual liquid side, even though the gas, uh, even though the discharge side's sometimes just as easy, even though, you know, in theory, your subcooling wouldn't be accurate, but you could have a little drop through the coil. They really don't want me on the inside because they did the floors over in the gymnasium area. So we're gonna jump it out here. The fan is direct drive blower, so there's no belts or anything like that. The filters are clean. I just changed those two months ago. We're gonna go ahead and get it running and see how it goes. Now, we did reuse the refrigerant and I hate doing that. It was decided that we should try to reuse it. So. I reused it well, when I had to flip it upside down to get the last bit of liquid out of it, brown stuff comes out, which is probably dirty oil from my recovery from long ago, which I've never been a fan of reusing refrigerant. If you want to play, you got to pay. That's my theory. If you're going to put that much money into a coil, you should put a brand new refrigerant in it. That's just the way I feel about it. But So we've got it marked. We got it, uh, the new coil marked on the inside there. Let's go ahead and kick it on and see what it does. Well, it's five o'clock, so that extra Extra call is putting me behind now. Still waiting for second stage to kick on. I have a bad, well, it did kick on finally. It had a heck of a delay. Must be built into it. So, it's not running though, is it? The new gauges there, they've got it. They're looking decent. Uh, are we on 410A on that? Nope, it's R290 still. So let's switch that over to 410A. So running a 95 degree uh, condenser and an 86 degree so That don't make sense. Okay, so we're running a 102 degree condenser and a 46 degree evaporator. Uh, 40, de 40 degree superheat, uh, if everything's accurate there. 
which who knows, still not seeing that other compressor run. I don't know what's going on with that. That's kind of disturbing. So they're both working. That's cold, that's cold. So one of these gauges aren't, aren't working right. Something's wrong here. We got some gauges closed. What's going on here? All right, so I took my hoses off. Normally never stick them on the ground like that and it shows that pressure. There's nothing in there. Oh, yeah. Okay, so now they're closed. Nothing, so let's see if we can zero this thing out. I don't know what in the world's going on with this. This is, this is screwy. I don't know if they gave up the ghost or what. Yep, a little bit of battery gets lost or loose and then it totally loses itself. All right, this is why I didn't like these old ones. Okay, now we're a little lower, that's better. There we go, zero. Can I trust you now? Oh, blanked out, there you go. We've got it. Door off, obviously, head pressure's gonna be high. So we're running 415 and 440, 135, 135. So it's working, at least reading now, which is nice. Let's see what we got going on here. Let's see how it does with the door on. Looking better now. We're running 103 and 102 on the head pressure and 45 and 45 on the suction so they look pretty good there subcooling is running nine on the one 18 on the other superheat 16 on the one 41 on the other and that probe i think i've got going bad it's constantly cutting out and losing connection yeah it's it's reading 86 degrees i don't seem accurate See if we can get that corrected. It seems like they might be backwards. They tend to do that sometimes. Uh, let's see here. That's the blue. Let's see if that's screwed up. See, it lost contact again. That's the lower one. That's the one that should be reading like that, but it's not. Subcooling looks to be right. Subcooling's not bad here. 19 there. Kind of scares me if it's going to start swinging. I yanked the batteries out of it, put it back in. Now we've got 11 subcooling, 22 superheat, 16 superheat, 19 degree subcooling. So we're pretty much running about the same on both of them, other than subcooling being a little higher on one over the other. I'm not horribly concerned about that. Superheat, 16 and 22. I mean, that's, I'm happy with that. We're not flooding back, we're not uh, super high tells me that the coil's feeding like it should. Let's see what we got going on in here. See if we can, yeah, we're sweating good. Yep, starting to sweat on both of them. Good, good. Yep, yep. Warm and warm. Nothing's gonna vibrate into each other. Make sure that's good. I got that new sensor back there for the uh, economizer. Let's take a look at the economizer, see if it's flinking, blinking any funky codes. Hopefully it's not. That was one of the other problems it had. Got some blinks there. Being constant blinking is probably okay. I gotta look at it here. So we removed a little bit of refrigerant out of the one that had the high subcooling. Now we're averaging right around the nine area on subcooling, which is exactly what we got over here. Superheat's running still 21, 22. 17 here so we're looking really good uh pressures are pretty darn close 325 330 129 133 so it was just a slight bit overcharged from what i i could see there which i had to switch the bottles around and you can lose your placement i'm not real happy about it still moving but 410a has always been really goofball like that but it's been holding pretty steady now it's not climbing and dropping uh like it usually would which is usually a sign that i've always seen in the past of being overcharged it just basically with a uh channel coil that it's got that uh, those just have no extra room for anything in it but like I said we got everything back together got this little rubber thing up here to help make a seal between the coil and the top in there but we're holding pretty steady now I mean it's swinging a little bit but that's why I don't like reusing the refrigerant 
All right, so I took a better look at the controller there. I misread it. Blink versus the other type of continuous blink. Either way, the blinking's definition ended up being that it wasn't able to economize at this particular time. If you guys enjoyed the video and you want to see more like it, give it a thumbs up. Check me out on Instagram. Until next time, guys, have a great weekend. Until next time, have a great week. And until next time, have a great week. Later.